Tally. And if you guys have seen any of my videos, you know I love to make these crocheted dolls. And one thing I get asked all the time is how do I make their hair curly? Because I do use yarn, not hair, for them. So I thought it would be a great idea to share with you guys how I do that. Um, it's not very hard. It is a little time consuming, but not hard at all. Uh, the first thing, and what I find to be one of the most important things, is um, the yarn you pick. First of all, it has to be acrylic, 100% acrylic. It only works with the 100% acrylic. Um, when I started making these dowels, I was using just regular yarn, like Red Heart yarn. Um, and if you want to hear all about how I came to where I am now, you can click the little card up at the top of the screen, it will, and it'll take you to my video about all I, bleh, all about how I make my dowels. So what I ended up choosing, which I'm very happy with, is Karen Simply Soft. This yarn is really soft, it's smooth, it makes the doll's hair shiny, and it doesn't make it tangly, and that's really important. Um, it's not so important here with like my straight hair dolls, but with the curly hair dolls, the red heart yarn would get tangly. So this is really nice. So I use Karen Simply Soft 100% acrylic. It comes in lots and lots of colors. Um, and this video is not sponsored, this is just what I use. The next thing you're going to need is dowel rods. Um, it, they're going to be in your oven, so you're going to want to go with wooden dowel rods. So I've got some wooden dowel rods here. My husband actually got a whole stack of them. Cut me a whole stack of dowel rods. Um, and what he did was we measured our oven. That's important. It's, you've got to be able to fit them in there. And you don't want to just lay them in there on like a cookie sheet or something. You want them to be um, raised. You don't want the yarn laying on anything because it could potentially burn. So you want to figure out what you're going to rest it on. You could put it on a cookie sheet if you make sure like the raised ends that the sticks are touching them and so that the yarn isn't touching the bottom. So we measured our oven and actually he built me a little kind of contraption for doing this but um, the first time I did it I had just put some glass bowls in there and rested them on the grass, glass bowls. But he just cut me dowel rods as big as I needed them and he cut grooves into the end of each dowel rod. Um, what you're going to want to do, <laughs> my little doll here is trying to tip right out of her chair. What you want to do before you get started is you want to preheat your oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. And then you want to get your little dowel rods that you have all prepped. You don't need dowel rods with grooves in them. I mean, it does come in handy. You can just tie it at the ends. But I did find this to be great. Very, very helpful for me. So let me get my string here. We've been making hair. So, and see, I almost knocked her over. And what I do is with the little thing, we just put the yarn, just a little, work it down into the groove like that. And then you can, um, you can spin this by hand. You don't want to do a double layer. You want to make sure that it's all one layer, but touch, you can have it touching. So push it right up close together. And you can sit here and you can spin your dowel rods all by hand, which takes a very long time. Or my husband came up with a wonderful idea, and these little dowel rods fit right down into a hand drill perfectly. And he just spins these things up as quick as it can be. So... After you get your dowel rods completely wrapped, whether you do it by hand or you do it with the drill, doesn't really matter, um, and they're all set, your oven is all preheated, you want to go to your kitchen, you want to put a towel on the counter, and you want to soak down the entire rod. Get it really, really wet. Um, I have a rod already done here, wrapped up, I wanted to show you, so this is what it looks like. So you, your rods will look like this, covered in hair, I mean, whatever color and you're going to want to soak it down with water. Make sure it gets really, really wet. Then lay them all on the towel and just kind of pat them dry. Then you're going to stick them in the oven and cook them at 250 degrees for 45 minutes. When the 45 minutes are over, you take them out, I got a little piece of lint on there, and leave them for 10 minutes to cool. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my rods and get them wet, put them in the oven, and I will meet you back here in about 50 minutes, 55 minutes. Okay, so mine have baked in the oven. They've cooled off. I have already cut most of them off the little rods, but I wanted to show you how I did this. So I'm going to show you how I did it, then I'll talk about what I have going on over here. So um, what you need to cut it off is obviously some scissors. And then I find a book to be the best. This one here, this is Heidi, <laughs> a classic. I found this at a yard sale, and I like to read it to the children. But it also is the perfect length. You just figure out your book based on how long you want your doll's hair. You know, if you want a little longer, get a little taller of a book. 
um, shorter books. You also got to worry about thickness. If the book's really thick, that's going to add length to it too. So I find this book to be really great for my doll's hair. And one thing I find important to remember when wrapping the doll's hair is to hold the book like you're going to read it so that you'll always know where the bottom and where the top is. You take your little rod. Um, I find these things get a little hard to undo, so I find it easy to like drop it down into like a basket or something. For this purpose, I'm going to drop it down here into the drawer on my desk. But unravel a little. As you can see, it's already quite curly. I just love doing that. It's like a little spring. And I'm just going to set it down into the drawer. Take your yarn, lay it at the bottom of the book where you want it, and just start wrapping it around. It's going to be a little noisy here as my stick kind of just flops around while I do this. But you just wrap it around until you run out of yarn. Uh, and don't worry that you're stretching the, the curl out of the hair and I worried at first too that it was going to go straight after this but once you've baked it in there it's going to go right back to being curly. Oh, it's gotten a little tingled and gotten a little out of my drawer but all right we're going to get the last bit of this on here. Again if it gets noisy here in a second when it falls I'm sorry but okay this is perfect actually because it shows you one thing you have to worry about. Um, sometimes for some reason you just get more yarn on one dowel than the other. But this is the bottom here. So this whole piece here is kind of extra. So I just trim that off. Got a little extra curl. If you want to save your extra curls for another project, maybe a smaller doll or not, you can. But for this one, I don't need it. I'm just going to put it down there in the drawer. And then I just like to take, you can pick your book up however you want, and just cut right along that base there. Got a little extra bit there. And then the yarn comes right off. And the more you like kind of work with it, the poofier and curlier it gets. So I'm done with my book and my scissors now. I'm going to set those to the side. Um, how long you want your hair or how many dowel rods you use just depends on your dowel. Um, my dowels, I tend to use about 13 to 15 dowel rods, just depends. And I'm using multiple colors of blonde today because this dowel is special and I want her to have lots of highlights. So the next thing you're going to need is your doll. Um, I find it super easy to put the hair on their head without any arms or legs in the way, but it doesn't really matter. Whatever works for you. You can attach their limbs before you do this. The One of the important things I realized early on in doing the dolls is the importance of a wig cap. I have already attached the wig cap to this doll. To make a wig cap, usually most doll patterns are going to tell you how to do it, but essentially it's usually just repeating some of the rows of the head and then adding on a small portion. It's really, really easy, but it, it helps you put on less hair because you don't see the scalp. Then I just get a crochet hook. Uh, I'm going to use this G four millimeter by Yarnology. And what I do is when I work my wig cap, I work in only the back stitches. So it leaves, I don't know if you guys can see this very well these like kind of ridge, see how it's like kind of spiraled for the ridges, the hoop that I didn't work in. And that is where I attach my yarn. I always attach my yarn, I start wherever my spiral stopped. And I always work, you have to decide how you want to work because it just depends on how it's going to lay, but I always work with the body facing down and the head up. And what I do is I just slide my hook into that hoop, just like that. I grab a curl. I'm always careful not to get them tangly. I find roughly the center, um, especially with like this, it doesn't work. I just hoop it over my hook. I pull it through about halfway. Everything in my house rolls, sorry. <laughs> and then you just kind of, you take your two ends and you pull it through and tighten it down. And that is how I attach my doll's hair. Um, Again, if you work opposite of that and you work this way, you're going to have your your knots and your loops are going to look different. So you have to decide which way you like it. I like it with this line on the top. So I'll show you that one more time. I just go what I tend to do with my dolls because I I again in the video about all about my dolls I talked about why I chose to put so much hair on their head versus not. What I do is I go all the way around the outside of the head and put one in each and every hoop. And then when I come back around again, I go every other. I start going every other until I reach the very top. So I'm going to show you one more time. I'm going to come over to the next hoop. 
the body's a little bit in the way, but we work around it. I slide it in, and I'm going to put another strand of this in. A little boingy there. Hook it around the hook, pull it kind of through, and just pull the two hairs in. There we go. Those are her first couple of strands of hair. And now I'll show you one more time with one of the highlights just to show you how they kind of lie by each other. So again, we want to go right over to the very next two. And see, the body is already kind of in the way of me putting this on, but with how I make my dowels, I have to attach the head and the body. That's why I don't put the arms and legs. It would just be even more. So again, I'm going to grab one of these lighter curls, hook it around my hook, pull it through, and then just pull the two ends through the hoop and tighten down. And see, now as the hair goes and it layers upon itself, it's going to get all these highlights mixed in with the darker hair and it's going to look really cute. When you're picking your doll's length of hair, you want to consider two things. How long it's going to be from the top of her head is different from how long it's going to be here at the back. As you can see, the back of her hair, it comes down pretty much her whole body. But when I attach one to the top, I'm just going to go ahead and do one here. I'm going to attach it right up here at the very top. Just to show you, I'm going to end up taking this out so that I make sure I do it in the correct rows. But just to show you the difference, these, these yarns were all cut to the same length on the same book. But up here, it only reaches to about there. So you have to be careful because if you want long hair and you just measure from the top of the head, and then you come down here, you're going to have extra long hair. Or if you measure, measure too short here at the back, say you want short hair, you measure here, it's going to be even shorter up here. So um, what I tend to do for short hair, and I know it's kind of a little bit of a waste of yarn, but I just find it to be the best, is I go ahead and make it long, and then I'll trim it after I get the entire doll's head covered because I just don't want to have, like, really, really short hair up here and the perfect amount down here. So that's it. That's how I do my doll's head. I, and like I said, I go all the way around for the first one, and then I start going every other hoop until I fill in the entire head. Um, and you'll see as you go, it works up really, really quick. And it's really easy. And the curls last for a long time. Um, the first curly hair doll I did was for my friend's daughter. And it's over a year ago, and that hair is still super curly. <laughs> so it does last. It's not going to come out. And it looks really, really good when it's done. Well, thank you guys so much for watching my videos. Um, don't forget... Uh, we're coming into like the last couple of days before the giveaway is going to end. So please, if you want to win this doll and all of these great prizes, please go check out the video. I'll link it right here. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share us with your friends. Bye.